what is known as a single tuned filter. So please note we are trying to see what is happening on the AC side. So we have seen that there are current harmonics. So the idea is the harmonics on the AC side will not flow into the AC system, it will actually flow into the filter. Though uh, see we cannot actually eliminate the current harmonics in the converter. There are current harmonics in the converter that cannot be eliminated or the, that cannot be even minimized. What one can do is try to minimize the currents in the AC system. So that means where, where, where will the current harmonics flow? It, if it has to flow in the converter, it has to flow somewhere on the AC side. So that, that is the path is provided by the filter. Okay, that is the idea. So that it does not flow in the. Uh, so what I am trying to say is, okay, let me try to say here. Suppose I have an AC network. So, I have a converter here. So, I provide a path here. Okay, let me elaborate this. So, there are harmonics in the current uh, on the AC side of the converter. So, if nothing is done, it will flow in the AC network also. So, if I provide a path in the form of a filter, okay. so the currents will actually be supplied, I mean, it is actually currents will flow through the filter. So, it will not flow through the network, that is the idea. Okay. So, we will look at uh, more details uh, how this can be done. So, let me take straight away an example, a single tuned filter. So, I mean, have you heard of single tuned filter? By any chance, heard of this name single tuned filter? Or at least guess what, what can be a single tuned filter? Yeah, it is actually uh, designed to <laughs> allow current at one particular frequency. Uh, I mean, essentially a harmonic frequency. Okay. So, wh wh what, it, what does it contain? L and C, L and C. Okay, so <coughs> it has, it should have an inductance, uh, inductor and a capacitor. So let me draw the circuit. The circuit is like this. It has a capacitor in series with an inductor, in series with a resistance. Okay, so we'll see why we need all this. So there is a capacitor with capacitance C. There is an inductor with inductance L, and there is an effective resistance in the uh, circuit which is R. Okay. So, this is a single tuned filter. <coughs> now, if I want to say uh, eliminate one particular frequency, which frequency should I consider to be most critical? Huh? Yeah, which one? I am talking about AC, AC filter to filter out the current harmonics, 11th. Suppose I want to uh, design a filter for 11th harmonics, then I have to choose the value of L and C so that uh, this becomes a resonant circuit for the 11th, har 11th harmonic. Okay. Now, can I exactly design the value of L and C uh, so that it is tuned for the frequency of the harmonic that it is supposed to eliminate or at least supposed to suppress. Why? Hmm. Okay. No, can I always uh, design a single tuned filter that means essentially select the values of L and C such that the resonant frequency is equal to say 11th order, 11th order harmonic frequency. Yeah, theoretically yes, but in practice what can be the problems? See when I say I have a 50 hertz system, the 11th order harmonic is 550 hertz, but frequency is not exactly 50. <coughs> frequency keeps changing. We know nominal frequency is 50, so frequency will vary over a band. So frequency is not exactly 50 means it varies over a small band 
the eleventh order will vary over a larger band. Okay, so the harmonic frequency is not a fixed number; it is a quantity which is within a certain band. That is one thing. Then what about the value of L and C? Though I select L and C, no manufacturer will give an inductor and say the L will remain constant forever at this value. The manufacturer will say L is this value, plus or minus by some amount. Okay, even the capacitance. Will be this value plus or minus some amount. So L and C are also some uh, numbers which vary over a certain band. Okay, so we can't say that L will remain constant at this band. Now, uh, actually, when it comes to capacitance, uh, uh, the capacitance is more uh, a variable. I mean, the, uh, the band uh, within which the capacitance value changes is much larger uh, or much more significant compared to the band over which the inductance changes. Now, that is because uh, it is more because of aging i mean as time passes and also the change in temperature capacitance is dependent on temperature now the temperature can be due to two reasons the ambient temperature itself it has nothing to do with what is going on in the capacitor or due to the heat produced in the capacitor itself okay so that also decides the temperature so temperature will uh, have an effect on the capacitance so essentially c and uh, l are not constants And the frequency itself is not constant. Of course, R is uh, not uh, affecting any of these things. See, R is just a, I mean, uh, resistance which is coming there. We will see why we why we have R here. That we will see later. But the uh, var variations of L and C will uh, <coughs> have problems, and the frequency itself is not a constant. Okay. So in practice, in practice. A filter is <coughs> not always tuned exactly to the frequency of the harmonic. that it is intended to suppress so there are uh, so many reasons one is uh, there can be uh, the reasons are number 1 the power system frequency may change power system frequency and hence say i gave an example of just a 11th harmonic i mean we can design also design a single tuned filter for 13th harmonic then the 13th order of frequency 13th order harmonic frequency is 13 into 50 hertz okay and uh, uh, i mean the band will uh, appropriately increase so the band in which the harmonic frequency stays is getting larger and larger as the 50 the fundamental frequency i mean as you increase the frequency order because of the fundamental frequency itself not being a constant okay. so power free system power system frequency and hence the harmonic frequency may change then inductance of the inductor may change inductance of inductor may change capacitance of capacitor may change in fact uh, as i said uh, the capacitance change is more significant than inductance change so uh, change in capacitance is is more significant than 
the change in inductance. So this is actually uh, because of aging and because of aging. Aging means as you keep on using capacitor for more and more time as years pass by it ages. Okay. So uh, the capacitance itself will change and change of uh, and change in temperature. So, change in temperature itself can be either due to ambient temperature or self heating. So, that is why the capacitance is uh, uh, capacitance change is more significant than inductor change, but compared with uh, inductor uh, uh, inductance uh, change or capacitance change the frequency change is in fact more significant okay so the free system frequency changes are more significant compared to the inductance change or capacitance change the so the system frequency will have a more effect in in, in i mean uh, that will result in the filter not being tuned to the frequency at uh, for which it is intended to work okay <coughs> so what we will try to do is we'll try to quantify this uh, deviation in uh, this behavior of the filter not being exactly tuned okay so we will so somehow try to quantify this so for that we will define a quantity so define a quantity called delta this is defined as omega h minus omega h o divided by omega h o now let me say what is this uh, omega h where omega h is the actual harmonic frequency which can be written as so okay let me first say what is omega h the actual harmonic frequency so from the notation you should be able to make out that it's not frequency in hertz it is angular frequency please note it's angular frequency okay. now i will write uh, omega h as omega h star plus delta omega h where omega h star is the nominal harmonic frequency that means if i want to design the filter for 11th harmonic in a 50 hertz system 50 hertz is the nominal value so, the nominal value of 11th harmonic is 550 hertz ok. So, where omega h star is the nominal <coughs> harmonic frequency. Okay. Then omega h o is there in the definition of delta omega h o by definition is 1 by square root of L c. Now, are you familiar with this formula? I do not know you, you might have come across filter earlier in some course. So, if I want to design the filter uh, for the frequency omega h o which is the angular frequency then L and c should satisfy this equation omega h o is 1 by root l c you are familiar with that right. Okay. Now, as I said l and c themselves are not constants. So, I write this uh, exp expression for l as so l itself is not a constant I will say l is equal to a nominal value l star plus delta l and c is equal to c star plus delta c. Now, please note this omega h star, l star, c star are all constants, they are some fixed values. The deviation is uh, in the form of delta omega h for frequency, delta l for inductance and delta c for capacitance. Now, 
this L star, C star and omega star are uh, actually related. So, can I say when everything is ideal, omega h star is the nominal value, it is a fixed value. So, can I establish a relationship between omega h star, L star, C star? So, this is exactly equal to 1 by under root L star C star. Now, please note omega h o is not a constant, omega h o is not a constant because L is not a constant, C is not a constant in general whereas omega h star is a constant. Now, if you look at the ex definition delta, definition of delta, omega h is not a constant, omega h o is also not a constant. So, one should not assume that I am taking trying to take the difference between a variable quantity and a fixed quantity, both are variable quantities. Okay. So, we say that this delta is uh, a, a, a quantification of uh, the behavior of the filter in not being tuned to the frequency for which it is intended to work. Okay. Now, what I mean this uh, definition uh, by itself may not be of much use, we will try to uh, write it in a slightly different form. Okay. So, I uh, will write this definition delta as omega h by omega h o minus 1 which can be written as I will substitute the expression for omega h o. So, just now we defined omega h o. Omega h o is 1 by root L c. So, I can write this as omega h under root L c minus 1. Okay. <coughs> now, the next thing I am going to do is I will try to uh, expand this right hand side in the expression for delta by using a Taylor series and the Taylor series is about the uh, ideal values omega h star, l star, c star. Now, please note delta is dependent on omega h, it is dependent on l, it is dependent on c and all these three quantities have an ideal value omega h star, l star, c star. Okay. So, it is a function of uh, three quantities. So, let me try to uh, expand this using Taylor series, but at the same time I will not write all the uh, infinite number of terms. So, I will restrict uh, it to few terms. Okay. So, when I do a restriction to few terms, then it becomes only approximate. So, the, what is the first term? So, yeah, I am trying to do a Taylor series expansion about the ideal values omega h star, l star, c star. So, the first term will be nothing but the right hand side itself with omega h replaced by omega h star, l replaced by l star, c replaced by c star. So, omega h star under root l star c star minus 1 that is the first term. Then what sort of terms come next? Partial differentiation. Yeah, partial derivatives with respect to omega h, with respect to l, with respect to c. Okay. So, then I need a partial derivative with respect to omega h of uh, <coughs> omega h under root L c minus 1 and this partial derivative is evaluated at omega h equal to omega h star L is equal to L star c is equal to c star into what? Huh? Yeah, delta omega h is nothing but omega h minus omega h star. So, in, in, so when I say delta omega h, it actually means omega h minus omega h star. Okay? So, that is the partial derivative with respect to omega h. Similarly, we have partial derivatives with respect to L and c. So, the next term is dou by dou L of omega H under root L C minus 1 evaluated at omega H equal to omega H star L is equal to L star and C is equal to C star into delta L. Again delta L is L minus L star plus 
do by do c of omega h under root l c minus 1 evaluated at omega h equal to omega h star l equal to l star c equal to c star into delta c. So, then subsequently you will have the second order partial derivatives and so on. Now, I will restrict myself to first order partial derivatives Th that is why I have replaced the equality sign by approximately equal to. Okay. So, uh, let us see <coughs> how to get this uh, partial derivatives. So, this is equal to what is the sum of first two terms omega h star l star c star, under root l star c star minus 1. 0, it is 0. See, just now we saw that omega h star is 1 by under root uh, l star c star. So, the first two terms uh, in the expression for delta now will be 0. Okay. Now, if I take the partial derivative that is the second, I mean uh, for the first partial derivative is re with respect to omega h. So, this is equal to so the partial derivative of omega h under root L c minus 1 is nothing but under root L c with L eval L replaced by L star and c taking a value of c star into oh, into delta omega h. Now, please note I have not explicitly stated here where delta omega h is omega minus omega h star delta l is l minus l star delta c is c minus c star okay. so this is the first partial derivative then the partial derivative with respect to l so when i take partial derivative with respect to l the other uh, quantities are assumed to be constants so, the other quantities are omega h and root c, okay. omega h and root c and it is not just taking the partial derivative and evaluating that partial derivative at omega h equal to omega star and c equal to c star. Then the partial derivative of square root of l is 1 by 2 root l that is evaluated at l star into L minus L star or delta L. <coughs> Plus the partial derivative again with respect to C. So, omega H star. So, omega H root L will take a constant value that is omega H star L star. So, the partial derivative with respect to C has to be taken for root C. So, it is 1 by 2 root c and it is evaluated at c star into delta c. This is okay. okay. Now, let us try to simplify this. So, I will write the first term as delta omega h square root of l star c star can be written as omega h star in the denominator. Okay. So, square root of l star c star is 1 by omega h star. Okay. Then what is the simplification of the second term? Delta l by 2, 2 l star, delta l by 2 l star. So, that is because omega h star is 1 by root l star c star. Okay. So, similarly, the third term is delta c by 2 c star. So, what we have got here is the expression for delta. Of course, it is an approximate, but for all practical purposes, it is the expression for delta that we defined. <coughs> now, uh, as I said, the variation of 
C that is delta C is more significant when compared with delta L. But when compared with uh, delta omega H, the variation of uh, delta L and delta C are actually uh, much smaller. Okay. So, th the effect of system frequency change will have a, a significant effect on this delta. So, what we will try to do is we will try to design uh, a filter, uh, in fact a single tuned filter for a particular harmonic frequency. So, we will try to do a very simplified design, uh, we will make some assumptions. So, this is a general expression for delta, but for the sake of simplifying the uh, design, we will assume that the changes uh, delta L and delta C are negligible. Okay. So, let us do a simplified design where I will assume that delta L is equal to 0 and delta C is also equal to 0. Now, please note what I have got is the general expression for delta. I am just taking a simplified case for the sake of uh, studying uh, design which will be much, si much more simplified. Okay. So, we will see that it is this, I mean in spite of this it will be much, I mean it is not so easy, design is not so easy, it is a very uh, complicated stuff. Then delta can be written as delta omega h by omega h star. Now, if delta L is 0 and delta C is 0, can I relate? omega h o and omega h star, look at the definition of omega h o, look at the definition of omega h star, look at the definition of delta L, delta C and suppose delta L is 0, delta C is 0. Huh? Sorry? Same? Same. Okay. So, omega h o is equal to omega h star. Please note this we, we get only if delta L is 0, delta C is 0, otherwise no. Otherwise, no. Okay. Now, if I take omega h, the actual uh, harmonic frequency, then can I, <coughs> okay. Now, one point to note is that when I say, okay, let me write one more step. If I take delta, delta omega h is by definition omega minus, oh, sorry, omega h minus omega h star divided by omega h star. So, that is that is uh, by, by using the definition of delta omega h. Now, just now I said omega h star and omega h o are one and the same. So, uh, I mean I instead of omega h star I could have used omega h o. So, from this I can write omega h as omega h star into 1 plus delta okay so we have this filter see filter is very simple it has an r it has an l it has a c all are in series r l c are in series now let us take the single tuned filter and try to write an expression for the admittance of the filter at a particular frequency which is the harmonic frequency. So, admittance of the filter at the harmonic frequency. Now, please note admittance and impedance are dependent on frequency. So, if I take uh, admittance of the filter y f and since I am evaluating it at the harmonic frequency, I add one more subscript h and this is a complex number. So, I just use uh, arrow to indicate that it is complex. So, this can be written as conductance plus j times susceptance. So, I will not again use uh, the subscript h, uh, it is understood. Okay. So, g f plus g j b f, g f and b f are real numbers. So, if I take 1 by y of h, I get the uh, impedance 
So what is the impedance? Now impedance uh, I can write. Say please, please not GF and BF were not there in the parameters or in the figure of the uh, single tune filter. But I had said R, L and C. So admittance, if I mean the reciprocal of admittance is impedance which is equal to R plus J times the effective reactance. So what is the effective reactance? Yeah. So omega H L minus 1 by omega H C. So this can be written as R plus J. Omega H is just now I got an expression for omega H. It is omega H star into 1 plus delta into L minus 1 by omega H star into 1 plus delta into C. So, this can be written as R plus J times so omega H star square 1 plus delta square L C minus 1 divided by omega H star 1 plus delta C. Is this okay? Now, is there any simplification possible? <coughs> yes, any simplification possible? Ah, LC is equal to? Yeah, please note delta L is 0, delta C is 0. So, if delta L is 0 and delta C is 0 by definition of delta L, it means L is equal to L star, C is equal to C star. That is what we mean by delta L 0, delta C 0. So, if L is equal to L star and C is equal to C star, omega H star is 1 by root L star C star. So, this gets simplified to R plus J 1 plus delta whole square minus 1 divided by omega h omega h star 1 plus delta c okay. so this can be written as r plus j so if i expand 1 plus delta whole square uh, i get delta into 2 plus delta divided by omega h star. So, I, I mean I will do one more manipulation here. So, I will write this omega h star into C as what? Okay. Suppose I take 1 plus delta here. Can I write omega h star into C as? Yeah, under root of C by L. So, can I write this as root L by C? Now, what is this delta? Delta is some deviation from ideal condition. Okay. So, uh, if you look at the definition of delta, delta is actually close to what value? Okay, okay. Let us look at the definition of this. Original definition of uh, delta is omega h minus omega h o by omega h o. Then we got uh, many other uh, uh, simplifications. So, compared to 1, see if you look at this uh, definition of delta, omega h by omega h o minus omega h o. So, there are, di there is a difference of two terms both terms are close to 1. See omega h by omega h o is close to 1, is not 1 but close to 1. Omega h o by omega h o is 1. Okay. So, I am trying to take difference of two terms which are uh, one is one, one term is 1, other term is close to 1. So, compared to 1 delta is small. So, that is the point. So, delta is very small compared to 1. 
So, if that is the case, then this impedance that is reciprocal of the complex number yfh can be written as that is uh, 1 by gf plus jbf can be written as r plus j. So, what is the simplification? Root lc is there, delta is very small into 2 delta. 2 delta that is all ok. Now, let me take the imaginary part of this. See the real part of uh, the right hand side is resistance. Okay. Uh, let me take the imaginary part. So, equate the imaginary part. So, if I I am equating the imaginary parts. So, I am taking this equation, this equation 1 by g f plus j b f is equal to r plus j under root l by c into 2 delta. So, what is the imaginary part of the left hand side? 1 by g f plus j b f, g f and b f are real, conductance and susceptance. So, what is the imaginary part of the left hand side? Yeah. Minus b f divided by g f square plus p f square. So, this is equal to the imaginary part on the right hand side is under root L by C 2 delta. Okay. So, I will write this in a slightly different form. <coughs> g f square plus b f square my ok, I will shift all the terms to one side. So, this becomes plus root c by l into 1 by 2 delta p f equal to 0. Is this ok? Now, I will do a few more manipulations. I will write this as g of square plus b of square plus root c by l 1 by 2 delta b of plus so, I will add a term on both sides. So, the term is under root c by l into 1 by 4 delta whole square. So, this is added on both sides. So, what is the purpose? Uh, yeah, I am actually completing the square. So, g of square plus, so on the left hand side what I get is uh, g of square plus b of plus under root c by l into 1 by 4 delta whole square. So, this is equal to under root c by l 1 by 4 delta whole square. Suppose I take uh, the graph on the abscissa, I have g f, on the ordinate, I have b f. That is a complex plane with the real part equal to conductance and the imaginary part equal to susceptance. Now, the question is if I take the equation that I just got in terms of g f b f, what is the curve? Circle. It is a circle. 